Good morning, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Um, I am going to talk to you about the Confederate and Union armies and some of the um, uh, characteristics of each of those. You'll also do a short reading on the Confederate and Union armies to learn a little bit more about them and answer some questions. So um, I, we're going to start with talking about the Union army. Um, the Union army was um, mostly made up of state units. Um, so uh, the United States kept a very small army after the Revolutionary War. They did not want a large army, the Founding Fathers. It was, um, they were worried that if there was a large army, it would um, give the federal government too much power. Um, you know how they were very worried about um, the government having too much power and wanting power within the states. So that had carried over into the time of the um, Civil War and um, so there was a very small federal army. And so uh, after the war started, Lincoln put out a call for volunteers and received quite a few volunteers, 75,000 volunteers. And then those volunteers um, were put into state units. And so the army was mostly guarded by, or uh, made up by the states. And at one point in the Red Badge of Courage, they refer to Henry's regiment as the New York regi regiment. It's a kind of a passing reference, but, um, Henry's from New York, and so he's part of that. The professionals and amateurs did have different colored uniforms, um, so that was part of how to distinguish between the two of them. Um, another interesting thing about the Confederate, I'm sorry, the Union Army was that it was made up, 25% um, of the army were foreign born. It was really made up of a lot of immigrants. This was because um, there were several drafts, and you could pay to get out of the draft. You could. Um, pay to not be part of the draft. And so the immigrants, um, recently immigrated, immigrated people were usually poor and so they didn't, were not able to afford to pay to get out of the draft. So therefore there were a higher percentage of immigrants in the army than, than matching what was the population of the country. These were primarily um, German and um, Irish immigrants. There were a lot, quite a lot of German and Irish immigrants that fought in the Civil War. Uh, so um, this is common. I just wanted to, this is common. This idea of um, or, or it has it has happened again. I guess I shouldn't say common since there haven't been that many wars in our history of our country that um, where there's had to be a draft. But during the Vietnam War, there was also a draft, and you could get out of the draft if you were in college. So um, that meant that generally more people who were drafted were had less money because they were not able to go to afford to go to college. So drafts historically in our country have been a little um, unequal, inequitable in terms of finances. So I um, thought that was an interesting thing to notice. Uh, I'm referencing notes here in case you guys keep wondering why I look down. I told you guys I'm not as up on war stuff as I am other parts of history. So I did have to take some notes on this topic. Um, desertion was super common. People running was super common. I think that makes sense as based on our book that we're reading. Um, and then of course after, so in the beginning of the, the um, war, it was actually illegal for black men to serve. And then as, um, as the laws changed as the war went on. And then of course, after the Emancipation Proclamation, we were able to um, allow there to be more um, black soldiers in the army. By the end of the war, there were 179,000 black soldiers and 40,000 black soldiers were killed. They were not um, treated, you know, they did not have the same treatment as the white soldiers, even in the, the Northern states, there was just still discrimination, um, but there were more black soldiers who were allowed to, um, be to serve. So here's some numbers about um, about uh, deaths. There were 110,000 um, killed in battle, 225,000 killed in uh, from diseases, and 30,000 died in prison camps. So more Union soldiers died than Confederate soldiers. We had quite a, the, we, I keep saying we, I wasn't involved in this, but I live in the North, so I kind of assume if I would be on the Northern side. Um, if I, I don't even think my ancestors lived here during the Union or during the Civil War, so no one I know was part of it. Um, 
so we had a larger army. We also had more resources because the North controlled manufacturing. So the South was basically, if you were going to break it down in charge of produce, right? Like planting and those kinds of things, tobacco, cotton, but the North made goods. Uh, so they had more stuff. Their army was better outfitted, um, but they were still pretty ragtag. You know, it was, a, it was a big, uh, expensive, large war. So um, there's a sort of a stereotype of the well-dressed Union soldier and then the very ratty Confederate soldier, which was true to a certain extent, but not, there was still, it was, they still had a hard time getting everything they needed. So those are the, that's the information for the Confederate, uh, for the Union Army. For the Confederate Army, it was about half the size of the Union Army. Um, and it had, was primarily made up of um, volunteers, white men volunteers, but there were Native Americans and African Americans and Chinese who were involved in fighting in the Confederate Army. A lot of the times the um, Native Americans had been kidnapped and were forced into fighting. I would imagine did not go super well. Um, there were slaves. The slaves would serve the army. So I think a couple of people had asked that, like, could, did some, did people bring their slaves with them? And, and they certainly did. Um, slaves were, were involved with the cooking and the cleaning and the building and those sorts of um, menial tasks of the army, which would be something that the Northern army did not have. They would have had to have had their men do those duties themselves. So that's a difference between the two. Um, they did initially ask for volunteers and then they ended up having to have a draft, have several drafts just uh, like the Northern armies did. Um, at the end of the war, 95,000 had died in battle and 200,000 had died of disease. So smaller numbers than, that's my children screaming outside, um, smaller numbers than the, um, than the Union Army, but they had a smaller army. It was um, a surprise to everyone, I think, that the war went on and as long as it did. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about battles tomorrow and sort of why, why the larger, more properly outfitted army of the North was not able to defeat the Southern Army sort of more quickly than they did. Because um, that was sort of the belief, like, they're just gonna win right away. This war is gonna be over in, I think, um, uh, Lincoln had ori originally asked for his volunteers for 90 days. So that's kind of how long they thought it would be. And we know that it lasted much longer than that. Um, so that is the difference between some, di oh, one thing more thing I wanted to show you. Not that it really is something that, um, you know, I don't know that you'll burn this into your memory. But these are some pretty common or famous names in history, and so I do think we need to talk about them a little bit. Commanders of the Union Army, you've heard of Ulysses S. Grant. I'm certain um, he's a very famous commander. George McClellan and William Sherman, William Tecumseh Sherman. I would say those are the the name. I mean, there's you know obviously quite a, quite a, quite a few. If we if you keep going through, I haven't heard of all of these. I've heard of some of them. Henry Slocum sounds familiar to me. Um, if you're you know, into um, old-timey generals. You can look up some of these guys, but uh, Ulysses S. Grant was sort of the famous one, the one who's considered this. He's like the reason why we uh, won, and then um, he went on to become president afterwards. So, um, okay, so then we have, um, we have the commanders of the Confederate Army as well, Robert E. Lee being the famous leader of the Confederate Army. Oh, these are all pictures of Robert E. Lee. Um, so, okay, the dog went potty, everybody. Um, so those are just some information about the different commanders. And I will put an article for you to read with some questions. And, oh, stop share.